Hello and uh, welcome to the third part of uh, the game The Hunters by Gregory M. Smith. It's a live playthrough. Uh, that is the game, The Hunters, if you can see that. Lots of glare off my light, of course. Uh, this is a continuation game. Uh, Not Jay and uh, myself have been uh, kind of playing this game solo, uh, which it's initially meant uh, meant for, uh, meant for. <clears throat> but we've been kind of playing it coher coherently uh, together, making sure that uh, we keep in mind that uh, this is a solo game uh, as you're watching it played. Uh, you can play two play two players, but you're going to need a couple copies of the game in order to uh, play it effectively. Uh, so let's get this started. <laughs> uh, the original grog grognard says sheesh it's about time uh so here we are we're starting uh our first our our our, our next patrol uh, just to bring you guys up to speed, we have played from uh, 1939, September, uh, all the way up to um, September of 1941. I'm sorry, August of 41. Uh, our Captain Lieutenant got a promotion uh, on our last round, and he is now a, uh, what do they call that, a uh, Corvette Captain, and Basically, he comes with his own little special rule. Uh, I can tell you exactly what it is here. Um, let's see. Well, they did tell you here. I'll have to look it up in the book. You know, he's he has his own special rule uh, as, as a con commandant uh, uh, has. Uh, so far, we have sunk 86,000. 400 tons worth of shipping. Uh, and we've also got an experienced second, uh, I said warrant officer, but it's actually a watch officer is what it roughly um, uh, translate to. It's a, it's a watch officer and we have an expert engineer. Now that expert engineer, the only, uh, th the special ability that he has is he will uh, be able to repair things on a minus one. So when you're trying to repair something, you subtract one from the die roll and uh, it's better. And I don't know if anybody else has noticed this either, but we have gotten a promotion in our submarine. We were driving around, or well, I'm sorry, we were uh, floating around in a uh, Type 7A. And uh, since we were promoted, uh, technically you're supposed to switch to a Type C uh, sometime around 1940. Uh, in July of 1940, I believe it is, uh, according to the rule book, to a Type 7C. And instead of doing the three transit boxes, we're going to be doing all four now because we have uh, 14 torpedoes to load up. So we'll get that ready. And now it says here you're supposed to have eight G7As, which are the standard um, uh, steam torpedoes. So we get, we're going to load all four. So we're going to load four steam right up front. And uh, I'm doing this because this is how you, if when you transition from 7A to a C, um, this is how you would set up this boat, the sub. So we get eight total steam torpedoes, if I can get them out of here. We get our standard 10 ammo, it says on the actual sheet itself, 10 ammo for our deck gun, our 88 deck gun. And here in a few minutes, we, we've been playing a few things wrong or incorrectly, or I've just been missing it in the rules and the sequence of play. Uh, clearly, uh, if you want to go after a ship that's been us unescorted, uh, if you want to keep following that ship, there's a following procedure as if you're rolling for a transit box uh, to keep following uh, the ship uh, is what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, <clears throat> but we'll get into that when we get to it. Kind of went through the rules because something didn't seem right. It's, it just felt like I was missing something. And it turns out I was. Uh, now, electric torpedoes, I get six of these. 
all right here. And now it says that I, I may adjust the mix up by three. So I could switch over two, uh, up to three of these electric torpedoes and make them steam or vice versa, three steam to make them electric. Since we're past the mark for 1941, uh, we're only going to have duds on a roll of one. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to keep it like that. But we also have an aft torpedo tube. So we have to load that. And I think we will put an electric. And we finally have an aft reload of one. So we'll reload, put a reload of an electric torpedo off to the side there. So <clears throat> that's two, that's set up. Uh, I got to get my markers out here. So we're going to get our range marker, put it over here. And uh, I'm just going to dump these out because I know I'm going to have to find the damage markers and the flooding markers. So here's our hull damage marker that you put there. There's also a flooding marker, which is nice. Uh, if I can find the sucker. I, I apologize. I should have all this set up anyway. I got incoming hits I have to have over here on my sheet. All right. Like, oh, day and night, submerged, surfaced. There's a few uh, s small things that uh, we were not doing correctly. Here's the flooding marker. Um, when we take, uh, when we exceed our test depth, we take the normal hull damage. But then we got, we're supposed to roll uh, 2d6, I believe. And if we roll over the amount of damage that's left, we're fine we can take that minus one modifier to detection. But if we roll under, or if we roll equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, whole point seven, then you're sunk. But if we roll under six on these two dice, we are sunk. We are uh, sunk if you roll under the amount of damage left. Now, if you roll equal to, you're gonna take another whole damage and you gotta roll again. So, that's one thing we were doing incorrectly. Uh, I thought that ex uh, exceeding test depth uh, was <clears throat> a, um, we were doing that incorrectly. Oh, not Jay's with us. Hang on a second. Sorry, not Jay. There you are, sir. <clears throat> Hola. So I thought we were doing our uh, exceeding test depth correctly, but uh, we weren't. Uh, now, another another thing is, is if you're doing a night surfaced attack or a surfaced attack, a surface attack, uh, you cannot, um, uh, where's it at? It cannot attack, uh, if you're doing a night surface attack, you cannot attempt to exceed the test depth as the boat is essentially still too close to the surface. So if we're doing a night surface attack, we cannot, we cannot do that. And according to the rules here, and the way I have read these rules, not Jay, is that you can only fire a first and second salvo at nighttime if you're surfaced. Okay. That's the rules that I've read here. So it says their initial fire, uh, however, there is a negative modifier when rolling to hit on the U-boat torpedo gunfire chart for the second salvo only while also increasing the likelihood of being detected if escorts are present. That's normal. To conduct the second salvo... Oh, wait, I'm reading the wrong area. Okay. U-boats uh, conducting a night surface attack may fire an immediate second salvo from other end of the U-boat as part of their initial firing action. However, there's a negative modifier when rolling to hit for a second salvo, as we know, right? Right. Um... Here it is right here. Using both the same round will make it easier to detect and may only be done via a night surface attack or against an unescorted targets. So normally uh, when we read that, we knew that we could full, you know, shoot both our forward and aft torpedoes, right? Uh, during the day, but <clears throat> um, it doesn't matter, right? But you have to be surface to do both. So a little bit small changes, things that we messed up or missed uh, when I was going through the rules. <clears throat> just small things, not Jay, just small things, buddy. Yeah, but uh, small things definitely change how decisions are made. 
<clears throat> so you, it says here, <clears throat> U-boats cannot exceed test depth during the first combat round of the night surface attack. They are considered to be too close to the surface at this time. So they cannot exceed the test step during their first combat round. Okay. Right. Now, following in a convoy is going to work different as well. So we were kind of doing that incorrectly because <clears throat> I thought that based on reading this, you know, if they're unescorted, we could just go ahead. They, they follow automatic, but we still have to roll to see if they've all of a sudden become escorted. Right. Which we did. <clears throat> uh, on a five or six, they're now, now unescorted. When following more than one damaged ship on a roll of one to four, the damaged ships stay together and they are still considered under escort. Normal combat rules apply. On a five or six, any damaged ships become an unescorted straggler and separate from one another. In all cases, undamaged ships from the original encounter are no longer present. So the U-boat commandant must now decide which damaged ship will be followed and targeted during the next combat round. Only one ship can be selected. When attempting to follow a ship or convoy, you roll a 1d6. On a roll of 1 to 4, the U-boat is successfully followed and the ship uh, and the ship or rearranged or re-engage the convoy at, uh, and must roll to identify four ships encountered again. <clears throat> the assumption here is the U-boat is approaching the convoy from a different perspective, presenting a fresh set of target ships. Yeah. So, but we're always, we always got to make the roll to see if they're unescorted at the end of the round. And now they're, now we got to roll to see if they're, they're still unescorted or not. <clears throat> but we always have the option after identification of the ship, whether or not to attack those ships or not. If we decide not to, after the identification of the ship, the IDs of the ship, we can not attack it at all. Right. So we can choose not to attack. <clears throat> you can either choose to foul any damaged ships which is automatic, or may instead attempt to disregard any damaged ships and attempt to follow the escorted undamaged ship or convoy instead. You see what I mean? Mm hmm So any damaged ships and attempt... You got that. Okay. <sighs> Let's see. Following is not permitted against unescorted ships. Instead, the U-boat commandant is considered an additional round of combat instead. So you're not following... Per se, if you're if they're unescorted, you just go to an another round of combat. You're not following; you're just going to another round of combat. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Okay. U-boats that have been detected and perhaps even damaged by escorts can attempt to follow the ships or convoy previously engaged once they have escaped detection. But be sure to conduct the U-boat repairs prior to attempting to follow. Do the inherent speed a capital ship may never follow unless it is damaged. And if following is, is successful, roll to determine the day, night rolled, and the U-boat commandant may attempt to switch to night. If the target ships are already damaged, no roll is necessary, and the commandant, commandant may choose day or night. If the ships have been damaged on the log sheet with a check mark next to the target and well on the current position in the U-boat combat map, following is automatic, but you roll 1d6 to follow. So you can roll the follow, but you can choose whether or not after you've identified the ships whether or not you want to uh, fire at them or whether or not you want to go after the actual, another convoy, yeah. from a different perspective, so on and so forth. But you can choose to shoot one torpedo, two tor torpedoes, three torpedoes. You don't have to fire all your torpedoes. You can spread all the damage out across four ships uh, all you want. Oh, that was you telling me to let you in. <laughs> You're in that, Jay. For crying out yes, loud, man. Yes, I am. Uh, so just, just some rules clarifications. Uh, we have a few things we're going to be doing a little bit differently uh, or handling a little bit differently, and it's going to change a bit um, as we go. So let me see. I had a couple other things. Yes, no. Uh, the way wounds work. Oh, yeah. The other thing is, is every time we go back to port, at the end of every 
Every patrol, you roll a 1d6 for your first watch officer uh, if your first watch officer is an expert. On a roll of six, he has been given his own U-boat to command and must be replaced with a new first watch officer, which will be the second watch officer. And if the second watch officer is an expert, then he's automatically going to become the first watch officer. Does that make sense? Yes, and we'll lo he'll, he'll lose the expert ability. Now, our first watch officer has to be an expert first in order right. for him to be considered to be moving on to his own. So um, we'll have to watch out for that. So And and uh, like I said, the second war, uh, warrant uh, watch officer, expert, a, I get no penalty if I take uh, penalty if he takes the command of the boat. Normally, there would be a, a penalty if your commandant is injured, right? Um, but since he's an expert and taken over to command of the ship, uh, there is no normal penalty. Uh, that's his ability, his special ability. So, all right. Just some clarifications for everybody who's watched it or if Gregory Smith is watching this later sometime that uh, I'm correcting things as I go. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you got to, right? Uh, so, okay. So on our map here, uh, we know that on our patrol, we are going to the Atlantic and the Atlantic is down over here, which I will have to move the map to show you guys or the camera, I mean. Here we go. The Atlantic is way down here. There's four patrol boxes. We have a Type 7C, so we have more rounds, not Jay, yeah. uh, to throw at these bastards. So if we're doing a following order, that was another thing, not Jay. I want to go over this with you right quick. There is a chart uh, for a follow uh, or additional round of combat. So if we're going to do additional round of combat against an unescorted ship, right, uh, we're going to roll on this additional round of combat chart. So right. the, the die roll modifiers, if it's if it's 1942, it's a minus one. So we don't have to worry about that right now. But it's a possibility of it becoming escorted. And it's also a possibility for an aircraft encounter. All right. So it's like we're continuing to follow that, you know, ship automatically with another round of combat. And all of a sudden an aircraft shows up or all of a sudden an escort shows up, you know, to uh, to pump a step, you know, to pop some shots at us right <clears throat> so that is something we didn't do um which we're going to be doing from now on right um, and i think that's it i covered everything we haven't done so we're going to the atlantic so we got to go to our first transit box <clears throat> we're going to follow our red arrows on the map here uh as you guys can see here to our transit box transit box which leads us down here to the atlantic and we have one, two, three, four patrols to complete. And we're going to round about back to the transit box, the Bay of, Bay of Biscay transit box, and back up here to the port when we're done uh, over here. Because we got sent back to the British Isles. But hey, we got a promotion. Our commandant has been promoted and our boat has been upgraded. We begged and begged and said, please upgrade our boat. And they said, sure. Sure, I'll upgrade your boat this time. So I understand, Nache, you saw something in the store today that you came close to grabbing. Yeah, yeah, I almost got the hunted. <laughs> almost. Almost. I got my copy of Flying Colors uh, in the mail today. Yeah. Uh, deluxe edition, and uh, I've been punching them out all day. Uh, that game looks fun. We'll have to do that one solo as well. And Wing Leader and Phantom Leader. There's a couple other ones that I picked up. Uh, solo stuff so we can continue to do this kind of stuff once a month or so <clears throat> because they're so epic we can only do it once a month <laughs> right all right well should we get started Nache? yeah let's make it happen all right man and like like i said we didn't get a total we didn't get a whole lot of stuff wrong it's no. just oh. a few adjustments and it's a lot scarier when you're exceeding your test step now yeah, it is. So, um, yippee. All right. Did you have a good day? Yeah. Um, went down uh, uh, Went down to my favorite game store, uh, Tabletop Game and Hobby, uh, in uh, 
Overland Park, Kansas, uh, just outside of KC. Yeah. And uh, bought some paints. Did you? Yep. Yep. Uh, I needed those paints to be able to uh, uh, finish the Destroyer Escort that I'm painting uh, for my uh, my company. Uh, my company, um, the, the first owner was the captain of the USS Tinsman. Uh, destroyer escort uh, in World War II, and um, I found a model that uh, has that in the back storeroom of that ship. So I said, "Hey, you mind if I take that home and build it?" I, you know, kind of do this as a hobby. I think it would be cool to have the ship built and painted exactly like it was for your your granddad. And the owner said, "Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks." So I've got it all built. It's now down to painting it in Measure 32 Mod 3D uh, for those folks that are uh, naval aficionados. Um, and uh, I'm going to get it painted up. Uh, then I'm going to get a wooden plaque to mount it on and a, a brass plate that you know, states USS Tinsman, you know, Lieutenant That's Commander or whatever, et cetera, and so forth. So they can display it along with the. Uh, battle flag the flag that flew over the ship during the battle of Leyte gulf which is tattered to hell yeah and then uh they also have the flag that flew over the sh his ship during uh the signing of the uh, uh peace treaty with japan on you know, uss missouri oh cool um, yeah so they've got those up on the a wall uh by the front door big ass flags if if you ever seen uh, a U.S. flag on a Navy ship. Yeah, they're bigger than you think. Really? Uh, th this flag is every. They're they're every bit of uh, six feet uh, uh, from the canton down to the bottom on the fly side, and mm. every bit probably twelve feet, you know, ten to twelve feet uh, long along the top. Wow. Um, so they're they're big. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be good. I'm I'm hoping to get it painted up and given to him before uh, the end of the year. That'll work, man. Not, not, not sure if uh, I'll get it in time or not. I'm sure you will. But uh, yeah, I got got down there, picked it up. Uh, tabletop is where I saw the game. I was like, oh man, here it is. <laughs> the hunted. <laughs> ah, I'm gonna wait yeah. just in case. So yeah. And, and I, I, I got it because I could take my ships from 1943 to 45. Right. Oh, That'd yeah. be a humongous game. Yeah. Uh, Silent Victory so far. I've opened the box finally. Okay. And Silent Victory uh, is got battleships in it that you can go up against instead of just tankers. So, like, and you get to mess around over there in Japan. So, yeah. that that's exciting. All right. <clears throat> We're going to get started. Uh, so, that's 20 minutes in. So we're going to go to our first transit box with our new U-boat. Let's try not to mess it up, right? And uh, we're going to roll. So that's box cars. Now, uh, that's aircraft, isn't it? No. What box no. cars is, is an, a random event, but this is not the first time that we've rolled that. So that's definitely going to be an aircraft. You're correct. I'm sorry. So aircraft encounter. We've only, I don't think we've had one yet. This will be our first aircraft encountered uh, for this game. I'm not sure. Uh, well, the first thing we need to do is we need to roll two two d six, and we need to add uh, add or subtract our DRMs. So uh, minus one if all crew is kill, uh, KIA or severely wounded. Uh, it's plus one if it's 1939. It's minus one 1942. So that doesn't apply. We're in 41. We don't have a green crew. We don't have an elite crew. Uh, our dive planes are not damaged. Uh, we're not on a patrol mission, and we do not have a Type 3D or an, uh, a Type 9U, uh, a Type 9 boat. So there's no modifiers. It's just a straight D6, uh, 2D6 roll. And a one or less, it's two two attacks. Ooh. Uh, on two to, two to five, it's one attack on the escort air attack chart and one crew injury. Uh, or six or more where he successfully... Crash dive, and there's no air attack. So here we go, Najee. 
rock this U-boat, or Captain <laughs> Wardrobe. All right. So that would be a nine, and that is not detected. So we are oh, good. Oh, good. Uh, there's no air attack. Uh, we were spotted, but uh, he didn't see us. So yeah, they, they couldn't zero in on us. So we, we, uh, we dodged that Sutherland. So uh, <clears throat> that's our first transit box. So our next one is right over here. And we'll roll for that. That's seven, which is nothing uh, when you consider transit boxes. Uh, really, it's a two, a three, or a 12. Uh, as a matter of yeah. fact, I did that wrong because I'm looking, I looked at the Arctic. Our transit box for a 12 is a ship. Oh. So oh. I did that incorrectly. So we'll need to rewind back to this transit box back over here uh, because I'm so used to seeing that aircraft on the. Uh, Oh, it's on the bottom of the British Isles. <laughs> yeah. So we encounter ship instead. So uh, we need to go to ship encounter procedure. So in a transit box, we we encounter a ship. So day or night, it's a one. So we are in the day. Uh, and then it says uh, we can switch tonight if we want. Uh, now, this is just a ship. There's no escort or anything like that, not Jay. So we can actually uh, go we for it night? at the, its day. Uh, let's surface and pump a couple of rounds into it. Now, let's, uh, how about we use our deck gun and save our torpedoes? Exactly. Yeah. Let's uh, find out what kind of ship it is. It's number three, which would be a small freighter. So we're going to mark small freighter right here. And let's find out what that small freighter is. So we're going to roll 2d10. If you guys haven't joined us for the last time, if you have any questions, you want to know why we're doing something, just pop it in the comments there, and we will do our best to answer it. So it's not a tanker. This is a small – oh, I dropped the die. Of course I did. I can't hang on to anything today. This is like the third time I've dropped a die. When I was learning how to play flying colors today, if they're d10s as well, and I kept dropping the dice. Uh <laughs> 20, that's the GRO, the GRO. And this small freighter is 4,200 tons. And it's the GRO, the GRO. So let's see if we can sink this GRO. What do you think? You want to engage it? Yeah, absolutely. Where are we in? Yeah, we're in. We are in September of 1941. And we're heading towards the Atlantic. And there we go. So we're going to move to ship combat. Okay. No escort present. All right. So we basically get to choose whatever we want here. Uh, day or night, two salvos, deck guns. Uh, but I say we commit our deck guns. We got, uh, you know, yep. a fresh 10. Uh, so we'll throw some deck guns. And I'm going to switch my camera so you guys can see the uh, boat U-boat command. Matt, there you go. How's that picture? Is that okay? Everybody Looks see good. that? Looks good. Okay, uh, so here's your incoming hits right here. If you had an escort hit you, uh, this is your range, close, medium, or long. We're going to go close range. It's during the day. We're going to do a surface attack because we have to. Uh, that's the surface. Uh, this is daytime. There's no escort present. That's where you would put that. If you were to have an air attack, this would be the type of plane you're facing. And if you have a wolf pack mission, um, which we could possibly have in the future, you're going to put uh, whether the wolf pack is busy or is focused on the convoy. And then these are your potential targets. So we have a small freighter is what we encountered. So we're gonna put a small freighter, freighter on the target one spot and it takes two damage to sink. Uh, and that's a two damage box. And as we take damage, we'll go up. Uh, now we're putting ammo down here. This is the ammo we're expending. Uh, so now we got a roll to hit. And of course there are modifiers to this. Uh, if it's nighttime, it is not. Uh, if we're unescorted surface torpedoes, no. Uh, if we're our commandant holds uh, a nice crosser oak leaves, which we need to get with a, lo a, a large freighter, not Jay. We need to get we need to get some oak leaves, man. We need to sink a hundred thousand in this ship uh, in this in this trip because that's a minus one to all shooting. Uh, we don't have a green crew. Uh, we're not all generic crew. Uh, severely wounded or uh, killed in action. Commandant is not severely wounded. Second salvo, no. 
Electro torpedoes, no. And one, uh, first uh, commandant or first watch officer are severely wounded, no. So uh, I'm just going through that for the people who have not watched this yet, uh, folks who haven't watched this yet. So here we go. We're going to roll 2d6. And our first deck gun ammo in close range is eight or less with no modifiers. All right. So I'm going to move this over here so you guys can see. Oh, five, six. So that's a hit with the first deck gun. That's one hit. Now the second one. That's a nine. That's a miss. So we only hit with mm. one, one of our deck guns, not Jay. That's okay. That's okay. We need to roll low. It could, it could be enough. We need to roll enough. low. Um, it's two damage on a one and we don't have the 105 millimeter deck gun. Our deck gun is not changed. It is still the same 88 as it was before. Oh, that's a three. So we do one damage. So that is all we're going to do to that. So that did not sink him. Uh, so that means that if we damage the ship that's been, that was unescorted, and if we want to do an additional round of combat, we have to make a roll. Uh, additional round of combat procedure with previous escort present. Nope. Here we go. Uh, following is not permitted against unescorted ships. See additional round of combat procedure for unescorted ships. Okay. What now? Read that again. I don't know. It says here, following procedure. Following is not permitted against unescorted ships. Uh, it has to be an additional round of combat. And this is where we were getting it wrong, uh, you know, yesterday. So follow damaged ships or follow an undamaged ship slash convoy. Follow any damaged ship, which is automatic. No need to roll a die. When choosing to follow any damaged ship that was part of a convoy... We don't even need to do that. It says, cat, okay. If any ships have been damaged, following is automatic. Yes, we already know that. I'm going through these rules here. Damaged ship plus escort, roll, no. Damaged ships, two ships or convoy plus escort, no. Attempt to follow ships or convoy undamaged, no. U-boats are successfully follow. Okay, I'm just going to look it up in this because this... Is on here. If all targets have been sunk, encounter ends. If all targets were damaged, if any targets are damaged, U boat may automatically follow. Yes. In following, determine the target are still escorted. Uh, targets are still escorted. So we have to roll to see if this ship is escorted. That's what it was. That's what we were yeah. testing. So they were unescorted now. Now we're going to find out if they're escorted. If, yeah, if they, got, if they picked up an escort. That's right. So six. Six means unescorted again. Yay. So we are fine. Uh, if, okay. If escorted, damaged ships stay together, return step one above. Uh, right? If yep. escorted, damaged ships stay together, return to step one above. If unescorted, decide. Okay, okay, okay. Here it is. If unescorted, decide which which straggler damaged ship will be targeted. Choose day or night and go to step four. Okay, so that's like convoy, right? So right. That's why I'm looking at this. Going following is not permitted against unescorted ships. Okay. Yeah. So we can't follow. We have to. Technically, what we're doing is we're disengaging and coming at it from a different angle. Because we lose contact with it, it might have picked up an escort while we lost contact. But since we know basically where it is, we can regain contact without a problem. Oh, I okay. So we're at ten, that's that's what that chart means. Okay, so we're going to roll two d six for the additional round of combat, and if <clears throat> if we roll a two or three, it's going to have an escort. Like it's an escort's going to pop up. If you roll right. a four or five, an aircraft will show up and attack us. Anything else, we're fine. We can go on, you know, undetected. 
if escort present, perform the combat. Okay, so okay, so what what I read before in these combat procedures that was a role. If we're following a convoy, this right. is a role to find out if that ship is escorted or not. Right. So the additional round of combat table is strictly for unescorted ships uh, to find out if they're still escorted or not, or whether we get an aircraft. Because if they're if they end up being escorted, we're immediately going to take an escort damage round, an right. escort procedure. If not, we're going to have an aircraft hit us or nothing at all. So let's find out. So that's a seven. A seven, we are okay. Uh, undetected. If no escort present, perform the combat procedure. No escort present. If there's an escort present, uh, ignore this notation. Okay, yeah. Okay. So there we go. So no escort present. Now we can do it again. We were at close range in this smart fra uh, small freighter. We got to roll and see if it's day or night. Six, it's nighttime now. We're still going to do a close range surface attack at night. Uh, I believe we can do that, right? Yes. Uh, let's see. Night surface attack, I should say. I have to double check this too because we were kind of doing that wrong. There's something we were doing incorrectly. We're facing the same ship. Okay. Here we go. Sorry about the low. Here it is. Combat procedure, escort present. Not not present. Okay, so decide if the U-boat will fire forward torpedoes, aft torpedoes, deck guns, must be at close range, or a combination of all three. Day and night does not matter uh, if they're unescorted, basically. So we're going to go ahead, close range, and we're going to fire a deck gun again. So let's go through that. So we need an eight or less. It's unmodified. It's nighttime now, so we're going to get a minus one on this. So now it's sevens or less. I'm sorry, nines or less, basically. So that's a hit. And that's a hit. So we hit with both our deck guns. So now we're going to find out how much damage they're going to do. So a six is one damage and a four is one damage. So we did enough damage to sink that small freighter. Yay, not Jay. We Yay. sunk one in transit to the Atlantic. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we caught one. Uh, we we caught a little freighter going between ports in the English Channel. Yeah, take that. See. <laughs> All right, we're gonna put a check and a circle. Forty-two hundred tons, my friend. We sunk the Grove. Uh, I need to erase that. Let me write it because it's all I can't read it. Sorry about that, now, Jay. We put a check mark. It's forty-two hundred tons. That's our first sink of the night. Yay. We didn't have to exceed our test depth. <laughs> All right. So next transit box. Six, seven, eight, nine. All right. Nine is nothing. So now we are in the Atlantic. So we move all the way to the Atlantic here. All right, now we're going to see if we can counter anything. It is in 1941, and it is September, so we're going to another. Uh, we're going to Atlantic. Oh, wow, four convoys, a capital ship, and a ship. That would be an 11, not <coughs> Jay. An 11, and the Atlantic is nothing. <clears throat> Second patrol box. The OG says, uh, and the sub no longer has that new sub smell. <laughs> uh, he says, you need to play the soundtrack to Victory at Sea. We'd yeah. love to, but then we'd get tagged. Yeah, we can't do that, unfortunately, Mr. Hall. All right. So a 6-7 is a convoy. Surprise, surprise. Right. So Which is always convoy. escorted. Always escorted, yes. So we need to figure out if it's night or day first. That's what we do because that's the procedure. All right. It is uh, It's nighttime. Good. And we're probably going to do this submerged. Yes. I'm pretty sure we're going to do this submerged and not surfaced. 
at medium range. Uh, now we need to roll to find out what ships we have. Uh, first ship is a four. That's a large freighter. It's, it's sounding good so far, not Jay. A six is a tanker. We got ourselves a tanker, sir. Yay. Another tanker. Ooh, this is a meaty one. And that is three sixes in a row. Now, how come I can't roll that normally? I don't know. Wow. So we have a large freighter and three tankers, my friend. Nice. Uh, oops, I didn't mean to roll that. So our first ship is our large freighter. Mm -hmm. It is 78, which is the Port Nicholson. It's 8,400 tons. Nice. This is the Port Nicholson. Not to be confused with Jack. Right. Uh, yeah. And it's only going to have three hull points because it's under 10,000 pounds. Where are we? There we go. Okay, that's, that's a relief. Our next ship. is a tanker at 88 so we need to flip here uh that would be the Irvikan, 6600 tons i had to look at that for a second e-r v-i-k-e-n Irvikan might be swedish who knows possibly 91, the IC white. Okay. I period, C period, white. 7,000 tons. Last tanker. 58. The caster, 8,700 tons. That is our biggest tanker there. <clears throat> All right, Nache, what in the world are we going to target? <clears throat> Let's go for the biggest one first. They're all under 10. Well, that's a good thing. So we should go for the largest one first, which would be our 8,400 ton. No, 8,700 yep. ton caster. It's a tanker. Yep. So that'll be this one right here. Okay, so we roll our day or night. We know what they are. We are definitely going to attack. This is the point of no return if we decide, yes, we're doing this. Yep. Let's commit some torpedoes. So I say not, Jay, but just for fun, let's see if let's put two torpedoes on that tanker we want and two torpedoes on the other tank, uh, the large freighter that we want. Why don't we do it like that? Sounds good. Maybe split it up. See if we can't pop <clears> this <throat> with just these two shots. So yeah, <clears throat> it's a gamble, and uh, we do have an escort. So that's uh, problematic if we can't uh, go undetected. If we can go undetected. Okay, so escort present. Uh, we're nighttime. We decided our shots. We're going to do this at medium range. It's a seven or less, but it's at night. So it's a eight or less, and we're not firing anything electric. So let's do this, nine or less. That's one hit on the first tanker. Five, six, seven, that's two hits on the uh, tanker. That's a, a hit on the large crater, and it's a four. That's another hit on the lot. We hit on all of them. So now we got to roll to see if they're duds. Uh, they're duds on a one. Uh, no duds to the tanker. And one oh. dud. One dud. That's okay. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. You know. <coughs> so now we need to find out what the damage is. So over here on this tanker, we got two shots that hit. So uh, let's see a one. A two. That's still good. That's three damage. That that, that sinks, sinks the sucker. Good. So that, shaka -laka. that's one hit. Now let's see what this other one does. A two. 
It's another two. We sunk two. That was a good nice. idea, was it not? Yes. That was definitely a good idea to go after both at the same time. Yeah. Um, wardrobe says uh, we should take Murray's suggestion, turn off the lights and play with a red light. Oh, really? <laughs> play with a red light. I don't know if you noticed this, but I got a little theme in the background here. This nice little cigar box battle mat, sea mat. See? Uh, changes up the scenery a little bit. Uh, so we sunk two ships in that convoy. Now we have to roll for detection. So our first thing we do in detection, um, we got to find out what kind of escort it is. A six. This is the first time we've ever had a veteran escort, and this is not going to be good, not Jay. Uh, I, an escort veteran does plus one hit. No matter what, we're going to take one hit if we're detected. So, we're do we want to exceed test depth? Uh, what exceeding test depth does is you mark yourself with one automatic hull point, and then you have to roll on the die, the two dice. That's a six, seven, eight, nine. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six boxes left. So I did not roll under that or equal to six. So I uh, am okay if I were to do that. I'd be okay. I have to roll. If I roll equal to, I'll give myself another hull damage, and then I will uh, roll again. If I roll under the six, my U-boat is sunk. Just sunk, period. It's done. It's over with. So exceeding test depth becomes more of a, a real strategic situation of should we try it? Should we not? I forgot to load my U-boat. I forgot to reload. So what do you think we should do, Nache? You think we should just risk it and say, forget about it. We'll be all right. Because it's a plus one. Uh, on the die roll modifier mm -hmm. automatically because we're in 1941. Um, I can show you guys this. So this is the chart you roll on for escort detection. Uh, if an eight or less, you're undetected. A nine to 11, you're detected. 12 or more, you're detected with, pl with a plus one attack die roll modifier for him to uh, inflict hits on us over here. And I apologize for the blurriness of the chart. So... We're in 1941, so it's going to be a plus one automatically. Uh, none of this applies here. Our fuel tanks are fine. Our dive, dive planes are fine. We're in, it's not a capital ship. Uh, we did not fire any. Did we fire torpedoes in the day? No, we did not. Uh, close range after firing. Um, uh, close range, we're not. Night surface attack. Um, we did a submerged attack. A night surface attack in 1941 plus is a plus one. So if we ever do we uh, do a night surface attack, plus one when firing forward and aft in the first round only. Wolf pack attack, decoy, long range, no exceeding test depth is a minus one. So no matter what, it's going to be a plus one to this 2D6 roll. So it makes it more of a decision. Oops, run. <laughs> McMurray said, oops, run from Twitch. Uh, you're muted, Nache. I don't know if you're, I guess he must be busy. So I'm going to decide for us. I no, think sorry, sorry. Uh, the dogs were going nuts. So oh, that's okay. It's all right. Um, oh, man. Uh, no matter what, it's a plus one, even if we uh, go below test depth. If we double, if we uh, exceed our test depth, if we do the test and we, it's, it, a, it's, it's a minus up. one, it'll even it up. Okay. But as of right now, it's and a what plus do we, one. What do we need to evade? What what's what's the die roll we need to evade? Uh, we need an eight or less, but now it's a seven or less currently. If we exceed our test depth, and we succeed at that, if we succeed at that, it'd be an eight or less. But right now, it's a seven or less to go undetected. <clears throat> oh man. Um, let's risk it. Let's not. Let's not go. I'm not ready to, to go uh, below test depth just yet. 
All right, so we're going to go for a natural roll. It's going to be minus one or plus one. Oh my God. Oh man. Wow. Look at that, Not Jay. Nice. I feel like I just. We get away. A whooping. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that did not happen. We went undetected. Uh, yes. So, uh, no, uh, that it's, it's done. We sunk two ships. We can remove this uh, here. It's a tanker. I, I'd say let's go to the next box and call this convoy done. You want to leave? You want to let them yeah. go? You don't want to yeah. follow? Well, I mean, we still have three patrol boxes or two patrol boxes. Oh, left. we got two patrol boxes left. Yeah, you want to see? Yeah, let Hey, let me. Yeah, let, let, me let, let, let me have. Let me show you where we're at here, uh, right quick. So we are currently in the second transit box, and we have two more left. Plus, oh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, on station box. We have two more on station boxes left, and then we go straight to the transit at the Bay of Biscay, which is a different chart, and into port. Uh, that's what we have left to do. We got plenty of ammo. Uh, as you can see, we have two, well, I, I don't know if you can, two electric loads in the aft. We got four uh, steam loads in the front torpedo tubes, and we got, you know, four electric left and three deck gun, uh, I'm sorry, six deck gun shots. All right, let's 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 go to the next box. You, you just want to let them go. Okay. Yep, yep. Do you see targets now, Jay? Yeah, well, well hold on. What, what were they again? That's too late. <laughs> uh, Sixty six hundred and seven thousand tons. So I think we're doing the right thing by moving on. So yeah, because w what did we down? Eighty four hundred and eighty. Uh, uh, we're at eighty six thousand four hundred tons, and we just no, got no. we just got forty two hundred tons, eighty four hundred tons, and eighty seven hundred tons. Okay. Yeah. But let's move on. Now, uh, this is going to be a successful patrol. The only way you'd fail a patrol is if you don't sink anything or you fail your mission. So if you have the mine mission and you sunk something, but you didn't succeed uh, dropping off the mines, that would be a, still a fail. That's another thing I read about uh, in the rules. Uh, but this is definitely a successful patrol so far, as long as we don't sink. So we'll move to the next transit box, and we will roll to see what happens in the Atlantic. That is a 10, and I believe 10 is nothing. It is. So next transit uh, on station box. Last one. That's an eight, and eight would be nothing as well, not J. So we are going back. Oh, wait. We can decide to refit at C. You want to try to refit at C? Yeah, let's see if we can refit at C. That's a one. We did it. We finally did it. We finally did it. Holy smokes. What do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't cool. expect us to make that roll, man. I know, right? Uh, refit at sea. Reef supply at sea. Okay. Uh, we rolled a one. It is possible. You go to step two. If resupply and sea is possible, the U-boat immediately rolls on the Bay of Biscay table uh, in counter chart to reflect the added risk and exposure of being surfaced to the transfer store to transfer stores. You roll 2d6. Okay, so. Travel space, last travel box of the patrol track containing the name of the patrol assignment. The U boat has a choice to determine reef by C roll 1d6. Okay, we did that. Okay, so we got to roll on this bay Biscay. We could get attacked by an aircraft while we're resupplying. Yeah. Uh, that would be a five. We missed it by one, thank God. Um, it's not 1942, thank goodness, because it would have been uh, minus one on bad that. Bad juju. Huh? That'd be bad juju. Yes. Uh, so a six, a two through four, nothing, six through 12, undetected, result 12, ignore the notation. The notation is for Gibraltar Passage. Okay, if aircraft encounter results, then no resupply is possible. If no encounter occurs, proceed with the resupply at sea. Full resupply, place the U-boat back on the first on-station travel box for the patrol and the first travel box on the patrol track containing the name of the patrol assignment. It also receives a deck gun ammo resupply. Okay, so it's saying place the U-boat on the first on-station box, which is right here. So this is a new patrol, by the way. So we have not gone back to port, 
But we received orders via wireless. That's correct. So I'm right. You don't have to, uh, if you refit at C, you have to put a P uh, in October. Uh, well, actually, it says it right here. Okay. So we go back to this first transit box. Uh, add ammo markers to the U-boat display mat, but not over the initial load amount. So it's 10. So we add our deck guns are resupplied. Torpedo resupply. I roll 1d6. On a 4, uh, I reload all torpedoes completely. Nice. That's actually nice. What about... Uh, what about uh... Deck guns? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I just did that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if resupply occurs, add one month to the refit period on the patrol uh, for that patrol, which actually represents an additional time at sea. Denote by writing this a P, uh, writing a P down on the first month following the patrol. Then we have to log our total tonnage, and uh, that is a successful run, Nache. So what, instead of an R for refit, we're going to refit at C. So we're going to put a P here for the month of October. It took us a month to refit at C. We didn't encounter anything, <clears throat> which is great. And then we write our total tonnage. Do you have our total tonnage added up? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, can you or? Yeah. Or give you numbers? Yeah. Hit me. Uh, 4,200. Right. 8,400. Right. And 8,700. 8, so that last patrol, including the encounter in the, uh, uh, the English Channel is 21,300. So we have cracked the 100,000 mark. 100,000. Nice. Times. Not because we were, what, at 80... 8,600. 86400. 86400. Yep, we're at 107700. So what we get the last round, I, I didn't write it down. 20 what? 21400, I think. Are you sure? Yes. Sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was good. I think this is going to be a, a rather uh, successful patrol, the most successful patrol. Like I said, I haven't made it past December of 41. So we're in November of uh, December of 41 right now. So let me do one thing here. So did you buy anything, any game at all? Nope. No, just the paints. Uh, I had thought about picking up some more uh, Star Wars uh, Legion models, but yeah. they really didn't. They didn't have uh, the Clan Rin uh, set that I wanted. Okay. Now that I see that as an advantage, resupplying at sea. You're going yeah. back out to the same, you know, spot. The only problem with that is, is you're not upgrading your crew. You're not, you know, yeah. The, uh, upgrading yourself or your ship or anything like that, you know, so, but we'll continue on. So first patrol box in the Atlantic, we'll get our chart out here and find out what we encounter. More than likely it's going to be another convoy uh, because that's pretty much all they have in here. Uh, we got to roll re really low to just get normal ships. All right. Oh, speaking of low, that's a four. So that's nothing. We move to our next on station box. Uh, that would be a five, and a five is, again, nothing. So third station bo on station box. That's a three. Ooh, speak of which, that's just a just one ship, not Jay. So we roll for day or night. Wait, wait we're, we're in the Atlantic, and we run across a single ship unescorted? A single ship. Uh, yep, a single ship unescorted. And it is a small freighter. 47. 47 is uh, it's the, the, one of the bigger ones. So 5,000 tons. Nice. And it is called the Carnation. Easy for you to say. 
No, it's the Comasian. <clears throat> All right. So this is unescorted, not Jay. It's during the day. Uh, we can go surface. Let's hit it with the deck yeah. guns. Yeah. Let's hit that sucker with deck guns. I I'm comfortable with that. Uh, you know, what we could do is hit him with deck, uh, deck guns and a torpedo. Just one. Just to be yeah. sure. Why don't we do that? We'll hit him with both, uh, both deck gun, two deck guns, because we're allowed to, and one torpedo. How about that? Let's do that. I believe the deck guns will take care of it. That's eh, a small freighter. Oh god, I'm just gonna take away the I'm gonna take away the steam. We're just gonna do the deck guns. All right. Okay. So we're gonna roll the hit. We got to be at close range to fire the deck guns, which we are. It's a daytime attack. Uh, we're surfaced, which that I put that on there. Close range. All right, deck guns. Uh, it's not night. We didn't fire any torpedoes. Nothing on this this chart. It's a going to definitely be an eight or less. Uh, that's a hit. Six, seven, eight. And that's a miss. So we missed with one deck gun. I should have should have fired that torpedo now, Jay. Yeah, but you know what? That could be enough to get it. Four. Four is definitely not enough to get it. Ugh. That is one damage, sir. So now we have to... It's unescorted. So we're going to go back to our chart to find out if it is escorted for an additional round of combat. Or we can just let it go. We're not letting that thing go. <laughs> not Jay says, uh-uh. <laughs> oh, that's a three. It has an, it's escorted. Okay. That's okay. Two or less uh, perform the escort detection procedure immediately. If the U-boat avoids this detection, repeat the escort detection procedure again for close range. Must perform another escort detection procedure before firing torpedoes. Proceed with ship's escort procedure. Plus, okay, so it's saying perform the escort detection procedure. If the U-boat avoids this detection, you repeat the escort detection procedure again for close range. Must perform another escort detection procedure before firing any torpedoes. Okay, Nache. Okay, so what are we doing here? I just, uh, we're going to, oh, this is not good. <laughs> I, I, I think we may have, oh, I think we may have, may be screwed here. A little bit. <laughs> Just making sure of something. <sighs> so basically what it's saying, what I'm what I'm reading here, okay, is if we're doing an additional round of combat, uh 9.4, that's it right there. Um Here we go. We roll on the E1 chart, which we did. If the result is escort, the target ships are now considered to be under escort, and escort detection is resolved immediately, regardless of what the range the U-boat is to the target. If the U-boat avoids this detection, it still must check for escort detection again for a new combat round. Okay. Per standard ship <laughs> combat rules. So, so the... This is what I'm envisioning. What's happening is as we, the first time we came in, <clears throat> we didn't notice it was escorted because the escort was to, was like on the other side of the ship from us. So if we were coming in from the, the, the West, it's escort was actually on the East. We just didn't know it was there. At, we fired at it. We got the hit. We broke contact. We came back around we decided we had to come from the east, and lo and behold, hey, oh crap, there is a ship there. And as we we're coming into the target, they have to see if they detect us. 
And then again, once we make our run, if we decide to do it, they get to attempt to detect us again. That that's that that's the real that's what's really happening going through the steps of these rules. Okay, so we have to do it twice before yep. we start attacking. Yep. Okay. We've committed to this already to follow. Right. It's automatic, but it's not following. It is additional round of combat instead. We ran into something, so we're going to have to roll this twice no matter what. So if we take damage and then we go undetected, we're going to have to do it again when we fire on the, on the ship again before we can even fire anything. Is that correct? Right. Yes. Okay. Two rounds of this crap. <laughs> All right. So we're going through the procedure. Let's find out what kind of escort this one is. It's a one. It's a green escort, my friend. That's a good thing. Yep. Well, uh, maybe. Well, yeah, maybe. Uh, it's minus one hit. So no matter what we do, we're going to subtract one hit. Uh Should we risk it and exceed test depth on this one? No, not not this one. No, okay. That, I was going to okay. say no. Okay, so it's a plus one to this roll. So we need a seven or less. Um, previously detected, no. Uh, but we are in close range. I think, yep, close range after firing. Plus one to this. So it's a plus two. So we need a six or less to go undetected now, Jay. A three. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Dice Gods. <laughs> oh, man. So that was undetected. So now we're in our additional uh, round of combat, correct? Let's yes. Uh, so before we can fire anything, he gets we to have, do it. Yep, he gets to do another. Escort detection. Because he feels like there's something out there. So he is actively searching for us. Okay. So we have to. Yeah, this is in my mind how it's actually working in in real life. How what we're doing the representation of the rules in real life. So this is like encountering a ship with an escort now. So mm -hmm. we roll for day or night. Uh, it is day. So should we risk it? Should we risk it and try to switch it tonight? Yes. Yeah, because, because if we lose it, we lose it. They don't. He he can't come after us again. That with the before we fire. Yeah. yeah. No, we did not. Or yeah, we did. We switched tonight. Yes. Yes, we did. Oh, yeah. Yes, we did. I'm sorry. I I thought I thought you had to roll high <laughs> for that. Uh, targets lost on a five or six. Okay. So. Uh, this is the same ship because it's been detected. Now we get to decide what we're going to fire at it. But, and uh, before we, we have to decide what we're going to fire at it first. Uh, I say medium range and submerged, not surface attack. Yeah, no, I do not want to be surfaced. Even at night, I don't want to be surfaced with an escort. <sighs> So let's let's just make sure let's fire two torpedoes. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's enough. <laughs> that should be. If we can now, get at least if we can get one hit, it's done. So now what needs to happen is we have to do escort detection detection first, as if we did a double salvo. Okay. You know, if we did a, a, a twin salvo attack, night surface attack, twin salvo forward and right. aft. Normally, they would get to tack, uh, do a escort detection first, and then our rounds would be fired if we survived it. You know what I mean? So that's what we're doing here. And then at the end of this, after if we sunk it or whatever happens, we have to do it yet again, even though we sunk that ship. So this was rough. Um, yeah. That, that makes decisions that what we do a little bit tougher you know, I, I feel like a U-boat captain now because I'm making these hard decisions. You know, I mean, I'm even thinking harder about exceeding test depth because our last the last round we played, I, I was like, yeah, why not? I mean, let's do it I, because there was no risk. It felt like there was no risk. 
So yeah. I'm glad that we we I went over the yeah, rules I'm, today. This this is more. Um, it, it brings it f- uh, further to decisions a U-boat captain would need to make. That's right. And I'm going to be so, honest. I'm going to be honest. Mm-hmm. I don't. <clears throat> I might play a couple of games by myself. Yeah. But I think it's a more, even though it's a quote solo game, I think it's more fun when you have quote unquote live crew with you. Yeah. You know how we're playing here. You're yeah. You're the captain. You make the final decision, but you're getting input from your crew as to, you know, tactical uh, suggestions. Exactly. That's why I asked you to come along with me because I yeah. figured it, it would feel like that. You know, I'm like, you know, it'd be cool if I had a second mate, you know, our first mate or something with me, you know, uh, someone with me to kind of talk yeah. me through decision making. So um, I like that about that. Now, Jay, I have to grab something right quick. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Entertain the masses for me for a second. <laughs> the masses. The masses of what? We got what? Eight, nine going here? I don't know. I can't see. I hope everybody is enjoying this so far. McMurray, wardrobe, y'all out there? Warmut, crickets. All right, my apologies. Yes, uh, McMurray says I am the masses, and wardrobe is still with us. <laughs> Excellent. Bow down before me. Eh, no. So now, now we're going to decide: should we exceed test depth uh, for this detection or not? There you go. Um, the re. Uh, thank you, son. Um, got me a nice cold brew. This is definitely a beer drinking game. Yeah. That's good. <clears throat> My voice was getting a little scratchy. So uh, our penalties, because it's it's not a night surface attack, uh, we fire uh, in the first round only, they're going to get a plus one at close range. Oh, no, we did that at one already. Yeah. It's just plus one. Hmm. Now, if we did this at long range... If we would have fired at long range, it would have been a minus one to the detection. Right. So for previous, we were previously detected, no. So yeah, so I, you know what, Nache? Uh, I'm the captain. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to risk sinking the ship or the boat. I'm going to exceed test depth because I really don't want to be detected. I, I get that. I'm good with that. So I'm going to take one hull damage. If I equal or la- less than... Let's see. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six boxes here. If I get a six, I'll take another hull damage and I'll re-roll. If I get five or less, which I've been rolling low, then our battle sh- our our sub is sunk. Yep. <sighs> roll high. Oh my god. Son of a bitch. Oh, well. We hit bottom, not Jay. Yep. That, ladies and gentlemen, the game has ended. <laughs> bum, bum, ba, da, ba. And you if still you haven't gotten past December 1941. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go through this here, okay? Because there is a, a victory points calculation procedure. But <clears throat> if you roll less then the current number of damaged hull boxes, the U-boat implodes and sinks. That's that's what happened. Our U-boat imploded. Yep. Uh, damn it. I've been rolling low. I should have listened to my little man in my head go, do not roll for that. Yep. Yeah. 
Wow, what a good run, though. I mean, we made it all the way to November of 1941. So that's good. <clears throat> that's a fail. So we're going to put an F there. And we are sunk. Unreal, man. Now, that is real. That would yeah. have happened to us a lot sooner. If we had played it properly? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. 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 We or, not or maybe not. Maybe maybe not. Maybe we wouldn't have. Let, let's just as a what if. What if we decided not to have gone to bottom? Okay. We can run through Roll that. for detection. All right. It's going to be a seven or less. Uh, that would have happened undetected. Yeah. Well, no, that snake eyes would have been the role. Well, yeah. And yeah. we would have been able to fire our torpedoes at that small freighter, yeah. more than likely damaging it. Let's find out. Uh, six, no, seven, eight, nine. That would, been, that would have been a miss. Miss. That is two misses. We misses. wouldn't even, we wouldn't even got them anyway. Yeah. And we would have had to have gone through detection again. Yep. Yep. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, our U-boat, we exceeded our test depth, and our U-boat has officially crumpled like a beer can and sunk. So Cr Crumpled like a beer can and a redneck's fist. Hans Huber has respectfully been uh, KIA again. This is Hans Huber the 15th. Uh, <laughs> I'm, retiring this. I'm retiring, Hans. His, yeah. his son that he had, the, the 16th, is not going to go on patrol again. Matter of fact, I have a there's a chart in the back of the rule book that you can roll for first and second names. Uh, the original Grongar, Gr uh, Gr 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 Grognard Gr says, cry. McMurray says, let's try again. <laughs> oh, man. And Doug Noble says, sunk by a depth charge. No. Sunk by going too far uh, below and getting crushed by the massive pressures of the water above us. Mm -hmm. Yep, we exceeded our test. I exceeded my test depth, took a hole damage, and I rolled 2d6 and got snake eyes. And if you roll uh, under the amount of hole damage you have left, your ship will implode. So um, the more damage you have, the less likely you are to implode, but the more likely you are to take another damage, you know, to your hull anyway. So, oh, Nate, I wanted to keep going. We had, uh, yeah, the second watch our officer was an expert. Our, yeah. our, our engineer was an expert. I just got rank up. Yeah, well, that's, that's what happens, man. Uh, Doug Noble says, yikes. And McMurray says, sunk by not following manufacturer guidelines. <laughs> He's not wrong. He is not wrong. <laughs> All right. So I haven't done this in a little while because uh, once I get sunk when I'm playing, you know, not live or anything like that, I just say, Pfft. Poo poo. I'm just gonna quit and not even do it. All right. Victory conditions. I have to look this up. Oh, scuttling. And, oh, oh, and of course, uh, you know, Tad comes in. Of course, comes in with sucks to suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you've never made bad decisions in your solo games before, Buster. Right. Right. Probably hasn't had an oil change in years. <laughs> no, this was a new boat. Should have stayed with the old boat, man. Should have stayed with the old boat. Yeah. Mm. All right. I'm I'm sorry. I was reading scuttling. Random events. Special decoration. Yoke leaves. Here's the section on victory conditions. Uh, 
Did I miss it? <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, determining victory. It's right in the front, and I didn't. Uh, I didn't realize that it was right in the front. Here we go. Uh, here's the, here's the, okay, so ending the game, and I'll read this verbatim for everyone uh, while Taps is played silently in the background. Uh, didn't even know that could happen. Yeah, me neither. Uh, you've opened up a slot for another enthusiastic young captain. <laughs> and uh, in the immortal words of JFK, never get off the boat. <laughs> right. Never implode the boat. How about that? Uh, so ending the game, Nache, uh, you got a calculator ready, right? Can, or can you while I'm reading this? Yeah, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oof. Oh. All, right. All right. Hold on. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Well, I'm not ready for you yet. Hang on. Yeah. Uh, the game ends upon completion of your final patrol leading up through Ju June of 1943. Wah, wah. Uh, no patrol assignments are conducted after June of 1943. It is determined after calculating the refit period that your next patrol assignment would commence after June 19th. The game ends. The game immediately ends regardless of date should the commandant be killed in action or taken prisoner. Once the game is ended, you would determine victory. Consult your log sheet at the end of the play and add up the total tonnage of ships sunk during the career. All right, Nache. I'm going to swap the combat map. Matt. All right. Or this here. Let's move all that off there. I'm just going to get this out of the way here. I'm going to have another sheet to bring in. Uh, we're going to play this game again for sure. Uh, we might make this a, a whole thing where we play <coughs> a month. I don't know, but we have a campaign results chart. So we're going to start uh, with our first U-boat and write down all this stuff here. But first, here we go, Nache. Hold on. I'm, I'm, taking, I'm taking a drink. Okay. And because I'm not sitting at my desk, but sitting on my uh, bed at uh, my uh, daughter's house. New captain is Sep Sauerkraut. All right. Or, or Balthazar Bratwurst. <laughs> Balthazar Bratwurst. Nice. <laughs> nice. All right. Um, hold on. So start at 86. Right. How much? 86,400. Plus twenty one okay. three hundred, and that's our total. One hundred seven seven hundred, because we one, didn't sink any on that last. Uh, one hundred seven seven hundred is our total tonnage. Yep. Um, so I can. Uh, dang it! I'm dropping pieces everywhere now. All right. Let's move this out of the way, and I will. Show everybody this here on the bottom. Total tonnage down here. Uh, okay, I'm off camera. Uh, total tonnage is right here. Uh, how many ships we sank over the entire entirety. So we'll count those up. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, right? Three. Yeah. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So total of 18 ships sunk. All right. And how many successful patrols? So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 successful patrols. I think that's honestly the most I've ever successfully got. Um, so now what? Based on the total tonnage of enemy shipping sunk, your victory level and performance as a U-boat commandant can be determined below. It is a defeat if you get 0 to 49,900 tons sunk on your U-boat is captured due to unsuccessful scuttle attempt. Uh, you can do scuttling in this. I'm not even worried about that. You are a disgrace to your Kriegsmarine. Oh, man. <laughs> So a draw would be 50,000 to 99,999 tons sunk. Marginal victory is between 100,000 and 149,000 tons sunk. So we got a marginal victory, not Jay. 
Nice. White cupcakes. You have enjoyed a modium of success as a U-boat commander. Your crew respects your abilities. And Oberkommando, uh, uh, Oberkommando der Marine places you in training command in 1943, assuming you were, you were not killed or taken prisoner. <laughs> but you have enjoyed a, a modium of success as a U-boat commander, and your crew respects your abilities while your crew's dead. Yeah, and, and uh, the word you're looking for is modicum. Yeah, modicum. Sorry. Yeah, modicum. I didn't even read that right. So you can have a substantial substantial victory at one hundred and fifty thousand to one hundred ninety nine thousand tons, or a decisive victory at two hundred plus. Uh, should you be killed in action as a commandant, you still uh, posthumous humus uh, po posthumously posthumously determine your victory level. The same applies if you are taken prisoner, which. I don't know how that works if you're taken prisoner. I don't know God. where that comes from. Oh, if all your engines are done, if all your engines die. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to surface or some. And a modicum of success. Like Where's the head? A modicum of success. Where's the head? <laughs> Emodium is what he's saying. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Emodium, yeah. <laughs> Go have your own show. So we had a marginal victory, not Jay. So hey, it's better uh, you know, than having a defeat. I'm okay with that. You know why? Because we had one hell of a story here. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at that. That's 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 the captain's log. Uh, bring the TP because it's going to be a blower. This dang right. Krieg Marine coffee gets me every time. Not uh. Yeah. So let's bad. just for thematic reasons and let's read our story since we have only been on for an hour. The Hans Huber, commandant of the U boat uh, 7A, U 10, uh, went out in his first patrol and learned very, very, very quickly what not to do. Right, Nache? <laughs> oh, yeah. He encountered a large freighter that was escorted and that escort green escort made a name for himself because he, 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 he hit us hard twice and almost brought our ship down. Mm -hmm. uh, we faced the port Montreal, remember? And yep. it took us three months to refit. And after three months of being refit, our, our uh, Kriegsmarine commander uh, said, you know what? Uh, go out to the British islands again. You know, enough of this crap. We went out. We encountered another freighter, this time a small freighter, named the uh, Karamode. And it's 5,000 tons. We sunk it. Uh, didn't get encounter anything else in January of 1940. Uh, we went back to port. We refitted. It only took us a month. Uh, and we went back to the British Isles. Uh, they want us to have <coughs> much success in March of 1940. And we encountered not one, not two, but six boats and sunk four out of the six because we went and we encountered a convoy first. Remember Nache? Yep. Or no, we encountered a small freighter, then a convoy. And then our way back in, we sunk the, uh, the Afton river or the river Afton. Remember that where we encountered a, a, a ship on our way back in the transit box and, uh, sunk it. And we made it, yeah. we did 22,000 tonnage, um, uh, or 22,000 ton, uh, run that time patrol. That was not our most, that our, that was our highest tonnage. Yes, it was. That was our highest tonnage sunk for any patrol. That was our best patrol. Yep. Uh, took us two months to refit because we were t uh, exceeding our test step like crazy with no repercussion and um, took a damn damage, took us a month to get back. And then after that one, he sent us back to the British Isles for another run and we sunk 20,100 tons. So we had two really good runs there in a row. Uh, we sunk the uh, Empire Wave, the, uh, I can't even, the, the Blaine, I'm going to call it, the and the Umtata. Remember the Umtata? Yeah. Mm, Ta-ta. 
Mm, ta -ta. And we got 20,100 20, tons. I uh, went back to port, refit for a month. And we went back out and encountered a small freighter of 4,400 pounds, the Nicholas Panderas. And we sunk that sucker. Encountered nothing else. Went back to port. Took us two months because we exceeded our test vet, test depth uh, to make sure that we weren't, you know, go undetected. And now yeah. here we are in November of 1940. We went to the Atlantic. They said, you know what? We think you're ready for the Atlantic. Let's go out there to go out there to the Atlantic. And we re encounter a convoy in the Atlantic. And our our largest freighter. We encountered, I believe, in this section. Yes, that was our largest. No, it wasn't. Our largest one was down here in the Atlantic at 12,300 tons. Uh, but we sunk a 10,100 ton, the uh, Napier Star. And that was the, oh, out of that convoy, that was the only one we were able to sink. But but we took that because that was a wonderful uh, patrol at uh, tonnage-wise. So, uh, so we encountered the AES, the Napier Star, the Trolla, and uh, the uh, Frenza Lenza, our, our friend, friend, Fred, sorry, Frenza Lenza. Then it took us a couple months, uh, to or three months to repair at sea because we exceeded our test depth past that three marker. Uh, I don't think we took any injuries or anything because I would have marked it down. But they yeah. were like, you know what? You didn't, you only sunk one. Huh, go back to British Isles, you know. So we did. Yep. We encountered we encountered not not one convoy, or we encountered one convoy and a capital ship, and uh, the capital ship got away. Uh, it says prior to December forty one, were U.S. ships sunk? I'm not sure. I don't think so. U.S. freighter ships yeah. they were just targeting anything really. Um, so we sunk the Kashmir which is 5,400 tons out of that convoy. The rest got away. We uh, encountered a capital <clears> ship <throat> and uh, we tried to uh, day or night. Remember, we tried to switch day or night yep. and it ended up just getting away. Um, it ran away. Oh, no, we did some damage to that capital ship. But we did, but... Uh, it got away when we were trying to follow. That's mm -hmm. what it was. Well, no, because it would have been named. Well, that's right. No, we... We, we we tried for so for nighttime and it got away, right? Yeah, uh, and we went back to port, didn't encounter anything else, uh, and, and then they sent us back out the Atlantic, and that's where we've been from uh, June of forty one all the way to November forty one when we were sunk. Uh, so we encountered two convoys in June of forty one. Uh, did pretty well. We sunk four of those ships, um, and. The largest one there we sunk was a 7,000 ton. Uh, we've been picking on some small freighters. Yeah. Uh, then we sunk three in September of 41 in the Atlantic. Uh, that was a good run. It was 21,300 tons, uh, just shy of our record, which was back up here in March of 40. <clears throat> and we refit at sea for the first time. We were able to do that, re to refit at sea. And we encountered a small freighter, only did one damage to it. And we tried to exceed our test step to avoid detection and were unsuccessful. The captain, the commandant, he made the wrong decision. <laughs> yeah. He should have listened to his first, his, uh, his uh, first watch officer. So uh, next time, not Jay, if I say, eh, let's do it. You say, uh -uh. no. <laughs> so we're going to record. This is our first campaign here. The name of our commandant was Hans <clears throat> Huber. Get the dots there. Uh, the boat ID was a, uh, the U-10 to start. And the new one was named... U-20. Well, I shouldn't have had named it 20, like 2020. It's been a crappy year. Okay, so what type... What were you thinking? I don't know. God. We had, a type, we had a type 7, A, and C. Uh, we did get we did get any awards. The cruise status was trained. Uh, boat status <laughs> uh, sunk. 
Start date was September of 39. And we ended in November of 41. Uh, how many patrols did we have? We had eight. <clears throat> or no, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, it doesn't say successful patrols. It just says patrols. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten <clears throat> patrols total. <clears throat> ships sunk. Total ship sunks were 18. Uh, total tonnage was 107,700. And date played, uh, we're just going to put 12, 24 to 12, 26. So 12, 24 to 12, 26. 2020. All right. So there's our campaign status. I will be keeping this uh, for all of our games so we will know uh, as we play. So the player name is Rocky's War Room. There we go. So there you are, folks. Uh, we completed. We're done uh, with this uh, teaching slash solo gameplay of the hunters so there we go it's our first one right there cool man that was fun uh fun to the point to where i wanted to play it every single night which i did for three days in a row um you guys in the comments you guys watching uh what did what do you think is this enough for you guys to want to pick this game up um This guy belongs in here. This belongs here. Does this make you want to pick, uh, pick this game up like Nache did? Uh, did this game annoy you? Uh, did you what, what, what do you think? What do you well, think? Doug's got a question. It says prior to December 41, were U.S. ships sunk? I don't mm -hmm. think it ever gives us the nationality. It just gives us a name. Yeah, it just gives us a okay. name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then he says, uh, the game seems to recreate the fog of war. Okay. And, and I agree. Uh, I, I, it, I, when, when we're the three days that I have played this game so far in the one extended game, so to speak, I feel like I'm the U-boat captain in the movie Das Boot. And, and you're making the hard decisions that a captain has to make. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, our first mate, our first watch officer, sorry, our first watch. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's watch officer. I, I, I'm, I've i never felt like that in a game. Like, I've never felt like I was actually making U-boat decisions. Yeah. You know, I've, played, I've played a few, you know, like axes and allies. That's not really a U boat or anything, but I play a few ship games, and I just felt like they were pretty static. You know, um, you weren't making hard decisions. It's just like things just happened. Um, he does another game called Interceptor Ace, which is the the planes and and stuff like yeah. that. I'm interested to see what that's about uh, as well. I'd be really interested in seeing that. But what's going to happen now is uh, we played the hunters. Um, the next time we play this style of game, um, it's more than likely going to be uh, the hunted, and then we'll do a silent victory teaching game, and then we will do uh, beneath the med. And once we've gotten through the entire series, um, uh, Sir Guy the First, another night, night, nice. Uh, thank you. Um, once we get through them all. We'll go back to the hunters again and see if we can't. We'll combine it with the hunted and see if we can't take a U boat from 39 all the way to 45. Um, we'll also play a game with each other. And the two player rules are really simple, Nache. It's basically you do a patrol, then I do a patrol. So cool. if we both have, you know, the, uh, the box or whatever, it'll be real easy and real simple for us to, uh, to uh, complete. So. 
then they have uh, tournaments and stuff they talked about, which are large games of 12 people sitting across from each other. Oh, wow. Wolf packs. So there you go, folks. That was it. Um, I know this is so, cool. this game comes up a thousand times, a thousand times on everybody's everybody's uh, game of the year or favorite game or top five of the year. I mean, everybody. He was even a live feed today. I don't know what it was, but I saw it. Uh, one of our many Wormut um, pointed it out to us. Um, one of the guys live said it's one of the one of their top five of the year, uh, the Hunters. So, what were we gonna say, Nache? Um, <clears throat> we we've streamed uh, basically eight hours worth of Absolute gameplay, fun. but we but we've had you know a lot of you know we've had some downtime of figuring things out. We've had some you know after show comments. Um, I think. Uh, what well, can I tell you? What my average time was. Your turn. Uh, okay, so on the back, it will say to you, playing time is two or three hours. Um, normally it says, how many times per turn? This one does not. My average per turn was about 10 minutes. Yeah. Sometimes 15. It depends on what you're encountering. Right. Well, you know, and, and there's there's a little more time that we're spending during the show because, well, we've got to, we got to make it entertaining. <laughs> I, I hope everybody has been entertained for the last. Are you while. not entertained? Exactly. Yes. Uh, sir. Come on. Sir guy, the first says, Oh, did you guys get, get sunk? Yes, we did. Yes. Yes, we did. Yeah. 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 Captain's fault. Captain's fault. <coughs> yeah, I take full blame for the. He's uh, when we should have zagged. Oh uh, no, <laughs> it wasn't an evasive mover, maneuver that sunk us. It was my dumbass yeah. going. Let's exceed our test step to be undetected, and then the boat imploded. <laughs> <laughs> but we got a marginal victory, so I'm okay with that. I'm totally cool with the marginal victory. I will take that any day uh, uh, over being completely sunk. And getting a crappy, you know, uh, less than 49,000, you know, 400 tons uh, or 999 tons. Uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll take this any day. So, again, uh, just reiterating, this is one of my favorites. Uh, I don't think this one or Space Empires are ever going to come off my top five. Yeah, probably. If not. I were to do a top five right now of the games that I have, Number one spot for just me, just solo, my number one solo game would be The Hunters. Right. Um, the solo rating is 100%. This is a solo yeah, it game. Is, it's a nine. It is so solo. Uh, they have um, a meter on the back. It's just the way we play it. It's not so solo. Uh, it says suitable for solitaire play, very high. Replayability, very high. It's never the same. Uh, the patrols are never the same. Um, not just in the tonnage or whatever, it's but where you go and what you encounter and if the escort gets you or not. Um, I mean, hell, I didn't even know it was an hour and a half when we got sunk. You know, yeah. I lose track of time. But no, if we were to do right now, uh, top five out of the games I got, Hunters would be on top solo-wise. But it would be a a tie a sharp tie for the games I got. Next would be flying colors, based on what I've read and what I got to play today. Um, that would probably be my solid number two uh, or three. Um, and then uh, combat commander would be below that. Yeah. So I love Warhammer. It's all I really play. Uh, Sir Guy the First says. <sighs> Warhammer, huh? That's how you play, man. You got to branch out. You got to do some other stuff, man. I mean, especially you now have to, but you know, <laughs> there's more out, way more out there than just Warhammer. I know, no, it's fine. Uh, mm. That's all I did at one point. I got, I got plenty of Warhammer stuff. I got Warcry. Uh, Warcry's uh, 
uh, the only thing I have um, from GW. Oh, no, I take that back. I got Lord of the Rings, but I don't count that as good. Yeah. <laughs> I count that as awesomeness. But, um, but yeah, I would definitely, uh, definitely uh, enjoy playing the heck out of this again. So he says trying, but broke. Yeah, there's a lot of us it, that are like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you are now with all the damn board games you've bought in the last month. That's called Christmas money, buddy. Oh, yeah. I, I, uh, I did that. buy something that intrigued me. Uh, I purchased something today called Phantom Leader. And yeah. Yeah, I that, saw that at the game store also. That game looks fun as hell. So it's a solo game. Uh, they It's the deluxe edition. I cannot wait to get that sucker. And Is that the, gonna... I think it retails at 75 yeah, it's like 60 something to 74, 72, yeah. uh, 76. And you you basically have a small board in front of you uh, and you have a card, which is your target, like a bridge or something like that. And you have to encounter bandits like the uh, MIGs, you know. Um, it's cool. I'll show you. When you're, you're basically going on bombing runs or, or attack missions, um, and you, based on them, you draw two cards and you pick which mission, mission, you look at the location. It's just when you enter, where you enter at, you have to decide where you're going to enter at and where you come out at. And then you have to, you know, lay out all the batteries and things like that that are out there. It's a, it's just fun. And I think that is one of the games that I'm definitely going to be picking up. So, uh, hey, one of our tw Twitch watchers, the Beller, Bellerophone. 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 Just ordered the game after watching. Thanks for the introduction to the game, guys. No problem. I'm glad you got yeah. it. And I feel your pain, sir guy. <laughs> he says, oh, you're going to like Phantom Leader if you enjoyed Hunters. Yes. And Sir Grognard says, or Guy the First says, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, Phantom Leader looked like something that I could do in this style, like we just did with Hunters. Uh, so as soon as that comes in, that's probably going to be the next one I'm going to play solo. Uh, if you're welcome to join me, not Jay, uh, for that. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's pretty neat. So uh, once it when once that comes in, um, we will throw it up here. Uh, but what we got coming up, uh, our next night fight is going to be Savage Core again. Uh, then we're going to have a Wily game. That's going to be fun. Uh, then we're going to have a Wily game. Yeah. They're going to be during the week. Uh, and then next weekend, uh, I'm going to be doing Space Empires with my boy. Uh, we're going to be uh, putting that up here live. Uh, Nemche, you're welcome to join us again if you like. Sure. Uh, I'm really angry. I can't get my... What? He can't get his Lehman Rust to put get put together. Because oh, as, as, nice, as nice as the models look when they're assembled properly, Games Workshop models are a bitch to put together because they don't build them like models. They, they don't create them to put together like models. They put them together like, I don't know, some Satan-infused plastic piece of garbage. <laughs> but once they're put, put together right, they look beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So next weekend is New Year's Eve. So that's, that's what I was going to do. Um, my son is going to be here, I think it's 6 o'clock on New Year's Eve or possibly uh, before that. And uh, as soon as he gets here, we will uh, go live with that. And and uh, we will go live with um, – hang on, dear. Uh, we will go live with Space Empires till midnight or whatever. Um, we decide to quit, and you guys can see how that is played. Uh, that's not going to be a continuation game like the Hunters here. Uh, it's going to be more of an instructional. Here's how it's set up. Here's how it works and what you got to go through. Because if we were to record the whole thing, it'd be a whole 24 hours with all the rules that we're going to play. So uh, we're just going to do like an introduction to the game so you guys can actually see it and what it's like and what it's all about. It's a 4X game. So, uh, but uh, next game is going to be Savage Core. The game after that's going to be Wiley's. Then we're going to do Space Empires and uh, continue from there. So that's all I got left. Not Jay, do you have anything else? No. Yeah. That was it. You think I covered it? Yeah. All right. Well, last but not least, from me to you, ta-ta, and we'll catch you in our next episode. Mm -hmm.